I'm going to give you a very simple remedy involving only one teaspoon every single day to get rid of your chronic sinus infection. And it can be more of a candida infection or a fungal infection called aspergillus, which is the most common type of fungus that could be growing in the sinuses. So if you have a runny nose or even a loss of smell, or which can definitely affect your taste. In fact, 80% of your taste comes from your smell. But the worst thing that people do to, that aggravates this condition is that they take an antibiotic. An antibiotic only kills bacteria. And when you get rid of the bacteria, you actually cause an overgrowth of this fungus. So maybe it started out to be some type of bacterial infection, but now it's switched to a fungal infection that is very difficult to kill with the typical antibiotic. And so people keep getting antibiotics over and over as this problem gets worse and worse. They take the antihistamines. They take these uh, corticosteroids, which get rid of inflammation, but it makes it worse. It kind of invades the back of the eustachian tube into the inner ear, and now they have inner ear infections. And then there's two types of uh, fungus. There's an invasive fungus, and there's a non-invasive fungus. The invasive fungus starts to break down the mucosal layer or lining on the inside of your sinus cavities, and it can start to erode the bone. So it can actually penetrate right into different tissues around your skull. From there, it can invade the joints, your bladder, and create a UTI. So there's some really important things you need to know about aspergillus. It needs oxygen to grow. It needs moisture to grow. And it will definitely grow more if your immune system is compromised. So if you're a diabetic, if you have HIV, it can really kind of come out and kick you when you're down. And also you can actually reproduce this uh, aspergillus and make it grow in a little Petri dish if you feed it sugar or starch. And this is where you see this fungus growing on like bread and potatoes, rice, things like that, because it lives on sugar and starches, which means that you probably need to change your diet. And this also includes dairy because there's milk sugar in dairy as well, and they will just thrive on that. So we get sugar, refined carbs, alcohol, and even birth control pills can make it grow more. Aspergillus has a unique strategy of surviving by shutting down your immune system through downgrading your vitamin D levels. So it goes into your receptors for vitamin D, exactly where you, know, you utilize vitamin D, and it downgrades them. Very sneaky to the point where you can't get enough vitamin D. And apparently it knows that vitamin D is essential for your immune system. And if you can't get enough vitamin D, you don't have a good immune system. The most important thing to know is that you need to take a lot of vitamin D. Okay, 30,000 I use. Make sure you're also taking 300 micrograms of vitamin K2 just to kind of keep the calcium normalized in your blood because vitamin K2 offsets the spike in calcium from the vitamin D. What would be the key remedy to get rid of this fungal systemic problem? Number one, garlic oil. Okay, garlic oil greatly inhibits fungus, yeast, and mold, not to mention bacteria as well. You're just going to take five drops of garlic oil in a teaspoon. You want to also get some oregano oil. Okay, that's another powerful antifungal, anti-candida, anti-yeast. Okay, five drops of oregano oil. Then make up the difference with coconut oil. Coconut oil has both lauric acid and caprylic acid. Both of those are antifungal and they strengthen your immune system. And you're going to do one teaspoon of this every single day over a period of about a month because it's going to slowly get into your body and start to balance out the microorganisms. You can also do other things too. If you wanted to add xylitol to this mixture, you can do that. Curcumin is another one that you can always add. And aloe vera is another thing you can add. You can also do a blue light wand. If you have a blue light, you can even take one of these wands, there's little small little wands, and, and put it up at your sinuses and for a few minutes a day, and that can help. The problem is uh, I have not located one yet. Maybe you can search one and find one, but blue light or violet light uh, therapy would be really good for that condition. If you had surgery on your sinuses, 
okay, and there's damage in the mucosal layer, you want to get the red light therapy, uh, sinus therapy. And they have these little devices that you can put up into your sinuses and help this condition using the infrared light, which is more of a, a different spectrum. It's not as much of a microbe killer as it is a healer of the mucous membranes and the damage that occurred from the surgery. However, you might find that you start breathing a lot better because it can get rid of inflammation. Now, there's a lot more to know about the sinuses. If you have not seen my other video on sinus congestion, check it out. I put it up right here.